motorheads, thank you for clicking on Race 22 Radio. I'm Doc Love, your resident motorhead. Patient is unconscious and the BP is 65 over 40. Uh, Team H start an IV with D5W TKO. Put him on O2 and can you send us a stroke? Team 8, it looks like VTAC. Give him 100 milligrams lidocaine bolus and start a lidocaine drip. House Call with Doc Love is presented by Black Acid Racing Apparel, the official outfitter of Race 22 Radio, and they can make you and your race team presentable at the racetrack as well. Connect with them on Facebook, Black Acid Racing Apparel. Drop your shorts and bend over, Mr. Babar. Oh, no, really, uh, we, we don't need to. I've, uh, we don't want to. You know, my kidneys feel a lot better in this position. Maybe it's just that I'm not doing any calisthenics. You know, if I did some sit-ups in the morning or bent over like this, I'd probably feel 100% better. Ooh, river. Thank you, Doc. You ever serve time? Breathe easy. Today, I'll be connecting with Trevor Knowles from Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina. Driver of the number 22 Knowles Cabinet Wilson Motorsports Toyota. Racing in the Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour Super Late Model Series. Winner, winner, chicken dinner! Yeah. Yeah. Party with chicks and guns and fire trucks and hookers and booze! Yeah, yeah, ah. All the things that make life worth living for! Ah. You guys still celebrating? We are, we are. We're just trying to let it all sink in here. I've finally got my first sword, the sword I've been chasing here for four years now, and it just feels good to hoist that sword up. And It means a lot to me and Donnie Wilson, the whole team. Uh, we finally were able to break through. We've had a fast car all year and just uh, haven't had the luck go our way or whether it be a mechanical failure or anything like that. Or just just trying to, uh, trying to stay confident and trying to stay after it, um, trying to uh, just steal the deal on a race. And I told myself at the beginning of the year, I said, I want, if I don't win any other race all year, I want to win Bristol. And uh, that was the one that was on my bucket list for the year. And just felt like we had a good car all weekend. I feel like, you know, me and Jake Garcia were probably going to be the two cars that they had to beat. And uh, come to find out it was. I know Jake Garcia had bad luck with a tire going down, but, um, just kind of fell on my hands all weekend. I um, just, you know, tried to bide my time there at the beginning of the race and just tried to stay, you know, stay out of trouble and keep the car clean and we're able to do that. I think we felt had to get put to the rear at one point during the middle of the race and felt like that was kind of out of my circumstances. But we're able to rebound there and get back to the top five and able to put some moves on the 35 and get by the fast cars that were leading the race. Um, just yeah, just trying to let it all sink in. Uh, I know uh, that sword was the tr- the sword, and that was a trophy I wanted to win all year. And just just a dream come true to be able to go up that ramp at Bristol Motor Speedway and and celebrate with all my guys and hoist that sword up. It uh, it means a lot to me, and it's, it's finally starting to sink in here. And I know you as a driver, you feel the weight of the world because you know the the drive the the crew. You know they're they're not driving the car and they're putting in all the blood, sweat, and tears on the car to try to make sure everything's right on it. So I know you as a driver feel all the weight of the world uh, trying to carry this team to victory. And and, um, it, and you guys, you've had the speed in the car, uh, and it's just been seems like just uh, either a small uh, mechanical failure or uh, that caused a big wreck up in. Um, uh, Pennsylvania where you nearly went out of the ballpark that was very scary so we're very glad you didn't get hurt with that deal and we we spoke with you then um so very glad to speak with you without uh almost leaving the ballpark this time so uh we're glad to talk about a victory this time so um, yeah. yeah that's right it, it, it's let's I've had my up and downs this year and finally got over Jennerstown and that was a rough weekend for me and all the guys. I know they put a lot of work into that car, and just to see it get tore up like that was kind of heartbreaking. But that's that's what racing's all about. You might I might go next week to Florence and might have some bad luck there, but we'll just have to keep our head up from Bristol and and see if we can keep can keep that momentum from rolling. Uh, I know the rowdy guys and all the guys at Donnie Wilson's shop has been you know putting a lot of hard work in for me, and and we all deserve this win. Just not just me, but all the guys that you know that you know sweat and the tears and stuff them guys give off for me and oh man it's just uh it was a dream come true this weekend at bristol to uh celebrate with all the guys there in victory lane and 
and open that sword up and open the champagne like you said it was uh <laughs> it was a cool deal for me and all the guys there for me and uh my parents my dad was there for me and i hate my mom couldn't be there and my wife but uh we had a good weekend um my uncle was my uncle was finally got to see my first race of my career and yeah i feel like he was good luck for me this weekend so We'll, uh, we'll we'll put it all into perspective here and, and try to move on to Florence this week and, and go for two in a row. That'd be awesome. And uh, I know that uh, you know you, you stay in Fuqua Arena, uh, North Carolina. Uh, the uh, the cars maintained from the new Rowdy shop uh, down in the – is it Mooresville? Uh, it is Mooresville, okay. yes, sir. All right. And, um, and then Mr. Wilson, your car owner, is from Oklahoma, so that's – quite a triangle uh, of distance between you guys so how hard is it to maintain uh, that that level of positive when you're going through rough times you know and tell me how trevor knowles manages um those emotions uh, when you're going through those rough times and the relationship between um you and uh donnie wilson because i think uh, you guys have a looks like you guys have a really good relationship um and i, I follow uh, Mr. Wilson on all the social media, and I just think the world of him. I think he's uh, seems to be a really good uh, car owner. He is. He's a really cool guy. We've uh, I've got with him last year, and just felt like he had all the you know the pieces to the puzzle in line, and um, had all the guys around him that we needed to, that I needed to be successful with, and uh, has a lot of connection with the rowdy guys too. So that's a big help. Um, I know uh, he puts a lot of lot of time and money in and sweat and this deal and um just uh he's just he thinks a lot of me and my family thinks a lot of him too so um he hasn't done anything wrong to us yet so we won't do anything wrong to him and we'll keep racing uh i don't see anything anything wrong with the car or anything like that we just uh just like you said have had fast cars all year and it's just tough to i live four hours from the shop in mooresville and it's just tough for me to get up there with the busy schedule i have here at work in fuqua so um, the little time that I do get to spend up there, it's, I cherish every moment with them, and um, just uh, just a cool deal to be a part of the the Rowdy Manufacturing, uh, Donnie Wilson Stable guys, and just trying to uh, keep the momentum rolling here. Uh, I wanted I wanted to win Bristol. I told myself I wanted to win this one if I didn't win any other race all year, and and it just feels good to uh, get the guys in victory lane. They've they deserved it just as much as I did, and um, just a just a cool deal and. Wish uh wish I lived a little closer. I wish I could spend a little bit more time with them and I know Donnie does too. Living in Oklahoma City, it's kinda of hard for him to get up here and hang out in the shop with the guys, but he's uh he likes driving a lot and I thank him for that and uh just uh we got a good deal going here and let's see if we can't keep it keep it rolling here for us. so uh, we'll move on to Florence and I think uh he has some, some bigger some bigger races coming up this year for him. I think he's talking about running Winchester, Winchester 400 weekend coming up in two weeks, and has some other guys going to get in the seat for me. I know I can't, I can can't can't run Nashville because I got some prior plans coming up. So, um, so then have at it, man. Put somebody in that seat that can get it done for me, and I think he's going to put some good drivers in there for the uh, Winchester 400 in Nashville, and also for the Snowball Derby. And uh, it'll be a cool cool weekend to go hang out with them. Oh, absolutely. Hey, is he, so he's taking resumes for the uh, for, for the seat for those races? Maybe I ought to turn in my resume, man. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he's uh, he's accepting offers for the uh, Nashville and uh, Snowball. I think he's got some drivers going to run um, some of his cars that Snowball, and that'll be a big deal for him too. So yeah. um, having some good drivers in there um, will we'll help us, you know, the driver development deal he's got going and um, just see if we can't build on this uh, this win at Bristol. Oh, absolutely! But you know, watching you from a from a distance, Trevor, and and watching your you know intense approach uh, to the races, and 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 it seems like you really are working hard to win for these guys, and you carry the weight of the world uh, for these guys, and and want to get in victory each and every time you're out on the track. So when you finally did hit victory, and you got to go up that ramp. Did it feel like a, a just a a a shower bath of emotions that came over you uh, for these guys that you finally did it for these guys uh, for for Donnie and all the crew? There was there was no other emotion like like taking that checker flag at Bristol for those guys. It, I counted down the laps. I took the lead at like lap eighty five and just 
it felt like the longest 15 laps of my whole racing career, the last 15 laps at Bristol. But it was just, a, like you said, a shower of emotion, just a whole load off my shoulders to be able to go up that ramp and, and hoist that uh, sword there at Bristol. But it was just a dream come true for me. And not only that, just to be able to get in the media center at Bristol and talk to all the media personnel there, that was pretty cool. And just uh, it was just the whole just the whole weekend was just, it just lined up perfectly. We had to let go our way, and the feel like the monkey's kind of off my back now. Let's see if we can't carry the momentum on the Florence. There you go, and I hope so too for you. Uh, talking about the ramp, I wanted to know: Did you do burnout going up the ramp? Uh, I think I might have done a little one. <laughs> I'm too sure. Uh, it kind of it felt nice to burn them down on the burn them down on the front straightaway yeah. there. Just just the whole just and be under the lights too at Bristol was cool to me and. Seeing all the fans, we seen all the fans there cheer for me. I had my brother-in-law come up from Tennessee, from Nashville, and that was cool to see him there. And he was in Victory, Victory Lane with me too. So, just the whole deal. All my my guys, everybody that works on the car, uh, Donnie Wilson, Troy Smith, all the guys, Powell, um, Stump, Jeremy Upchurch, Upchurch Performance has given me a great hot rod this year under the hood, and um, just can't thank him enough. All his guys, they do a great job with the horsepower and. Just I uh, feel like every, everything fell in line this weekend. It kind of worked out for me, and just uh, just can't thank all them guys enough. Yeah, and uh, like I said, I, I was real tickled, real proud of, uh, of you guys. And, and I was really interested in this race uh, to see how and how many of the Cars Tour regulars uh, were going to be there. And I was very, very pleased with the showing that we had and the performance of these guys. Uh, of course, you grabbed the pole. Uh, with what a fourteen five oh eight dude that is cooking around that track, uh, so really proud of you for that. Uh, Steven Nassie finished third. Greg Van Alst, uh, he was the other lap leader, uh, other than Garcia. Garcia led the first uh, sixty four laps. Um, I think I've I don't know if he's he's considered a Cars Tour regular, but I've adopted him as a Cars Tour guy. Uh, he's a sharp little racer, very sharp. I think he has a lot of potential in this sport. I think he's uh, he's going to be one to contend with for sure. And he's uh, really stretched his legs uh, every time he's raced with us. And he's proved there with a hodgepodge of all the different uh, series there that uh, young man's gonna gonna be tough to deal with. And um, and I, I think I'd like to adopt him as a cars to a regular. So I, I put him in my notes as the cars to a regular. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> he is. I think so. I think you're on the right track with that. He's. Uh, I talked to him a couple times before and after the race, and seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders. He's a uh, very smart young racer, and he's got a good car and a good crew chief behind him too. So that's. He's yeah. got the ingredients that it takes to win races, and he showed that he can. He showed that he can stretch his legs and and, and run with his guys. You know the regular CRA guys, the Southern Super Series guys too. So. Um, and I know he's, uh, he's been running a few car store races with us too. So he's, uh, he's definitely going to be the one to beat these next couple of races. And, um, like I said, he's a very nice kid. Talked to him a couple of times and just, uh, just, you know, just a cool, cool honor to meet all these, these young kids that are coming up through the rankings like I am. And, um, you know, young boys that might not have enough, enough, you know, enough experience and enough, you know, um, things like that, that can go his way, but. Seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders, and he, he runs a very smart race. I know he had some bad luck there, getting in, getting in trouble with his tire going flat or whatever he had going on there. But I'll take it any way I can get it. Um, I know he. I don't like to win races off other people's bad luck, but um, and I'll take it any way I can get it. I've had some bad luck this year too, so it works out both ways. And um, he's going to be strong here at Florence, and I'm sure he's probably going to run Nashville too. So. Um, he's going to be the one I'm going to keep my eye on and, uh, see if we can't have any, any other, see if we can, you know, compete with him here at Florence. He's, he's going to be fast and, uh, we'll see how it goes. But like I said, he's a, a great young kid and uh, it was cool talking to him at Bristol. Yeah. He seems to be one of those young racers that are m- mature beyond their years, like a young Matt Benedetto and, uh, Ryan Rebko, and even Jonathan Schaefer that's racing with us now in late model stocks with the Cars Tour. Uh, those guys are the uh, drivers that seem to excel when they come along at a young age, but they have a certain um, calmness to them, and they seem a little more mature 
than your average young racers. And, you know, it's drivers like that that tend to step it up to the next level uh, a little quicker and can handle it because they have that maturity to them. And he seems to, have, you know, have that, um, that uh, whatever you call it, that it to it. You know, he just seems so mature and has that racing... Um, intelligence uh, about him like some of these other guys i mentioned so that is correct he definitely does he definitely has you know a good mindset going into the race weekend and you can tell he's got a kind of kind of does his own deal kind of sticks with his his own card sticks with his plan you know for the weekend or for the race or whatnot and seems like he's got a good crew chief behind him too kind of helping him and, and teaching him and leading him on too so he, he's running a good race. He's doing everything he needs to do to win the race and just had bad luck, and I know how that feels. And I hate it for anybody that has bad luck on race yeah. day and um, just, uh, yeah, just got to move on. Got to keep it going and, and, and move on to the next race. Yeah, I think he had uh, two tires that were going down. They had to change at that one uh, late competition caution when they brought him in lap 64. Uh, when you had to go to the back, uh, you know, talking about some of the uh, – luck and things like that through the race when you had to go to the back what was it for well we we weren't too sure when we come in on first competition caution at lap 35 we weren't too sure what the crew guys could do to the car and uh one, my crew chief came around and checked all the tires because we had some problems going problems with the you know the tires blistering and coming apart and uh whatnot with that but we were fortunate we we came in on lap 35 and we didn't have any didn't have any problems with the tires or anything like that but we noticed that we're building a lot of air pressure and i think that's where a lot of the the coming apartness of the tires were coming from was just maybe the air pressure building up too much in them but um and then out of instinct uh one of the guys just ripped a tear off off the windshield and i guess the uh we, we weren't able to do that so uh, I don't not understanding why that was a problem, but maybe it was a blessing for me because I think lap 37 or 38, Sammy Smith got into the wall, and maybe it was a blessing for me. I might have got caught caught up into that wreck, and just uh, just everything worked out for me. Uh, yeah, they they put me to the rear <laughs> of the field because my guy ripped off a tear off off the windshield. And yeah, oh that, that, that sure. was that the first time kind of they did deal. the competition caution because the first one seemed to be a lot of uh, disorganization where a lot of the first guys that came in went to the pit stalls and i don't think it was supposed to but it was a lot of disorganization where didn't uh the information didn't get transferred over to the crews and nobody knew exactly what to do and how there's going to be checked because uh, the uh, officials were running out on the pit road trying to get everybody from their pit stalls, so that was kind of yeah. There was there was definitely a little bit of confusion there. Um, we got told at the beginning of the race that we were going to have a competition caution. We weren't very, we weren't sure whether we we're going to have it or not. And they finally told us that you know lap thirty five was going to be a caution to come in and check the tires and um, just didn't really know what we could do to the car. Um, we just felt like, you know, like any other competition caution, you know, you could wipe your tires down or check your air pressure, do a little bit of a track bar adjustment or anything like that and come to find out it wasn't. So we uh, we bit the bullet on that one and, and was able to get back to the field pretty quickly and felt like I had a good enough car to uh, just bide my time and, and just be patient and it was going to work out good for me in the end. So, and that's what happened. And I uh, just can't thank the good Lord above for, for working it out for me. So, yeah, uh, we'll, We'll just move on to Florence and um, just see if we can't get another win there. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, Sammy Smith. He uh, he ended up finishing seventh, and uh, he had qualified uh, P eighth, um, a Cars Tour regular. Justin Kreider uh, qualified twelfth, but he finished eighth. So really proud of those guys. That's a smaller team, and uh, so glad that they went down there and raced. And uh, really proud of their performance. They did uh, just fine. Cody Connor, another sharp uh, young racer, really, really intelligent young racer, uh, races uh, the pro late models uh, that's uh, trying to race here in the Carolinas. Uh, I've seen him race a little bit of everything. Uh, really fast in a super late model. Uh, I think he has the record with the Cars Tour at uh, Hickory. Uh, he qualified fifth, ended up tenth. Uh, Matt Craig didn't really have the best of races at Hickory. Very odd for uh, Matt. But uh, he qualified 13th, finished 13th, uh, which really tightens up the points race. Uh, Corey Heim had a, a good car, qualified fourth, but got caught up. I think he had a tire go down and really smashed up his car. Glad he, he was okay because he hit hard. Uh, he ended up 19th. And Jeff Batten, 
Uh, he did start, but he started with a uh, hurt race car, but he just, uh, to get the points, he did start and just uh, limped around for a while. Uh, unfortunately, he had a hurt race car, I think, in practice, a uh, hurt motor or something uh, to that effect. But uh, I think that's what Jack told me. Um, I think that was correct, and I, I know I know uh, Cody Connor. Like you said, he's uh, he's coming along. He's he's really shocked a bunch of guys there and at Bristol too. So I grew up racing with him in the Pro All Star Series when the pro the pro class first came out, and I've always you know liked Cody as a young racer, and we've always you know raced each other pretty clean and had respect for each other on the racetrack too. So it was cool to see him have a good run and and, and finish the race with the car in one piece too. So that was always a plus for him. Yeah, you always know when Cody's there. You cannot miss him. His you car. cannot miss. You cannot miss Cody's car. That's for sure. He's got one of the most unique race cars at the racetrack. So, yeah, yeah. And, that, was, uh, that really, was cool. And that really goes with his personality. I really have uh, enjoyed talking with him. So it's, uh, he's uh, he's a good one. That's for sure. But the uh, uh, finishing order. Let's take a look at the top ten. Of course, Trevor Knowles, our guest of honor here at the. Uh, House Calls with Doc Love. Uh, we're talking with Trevor Knowles, winner of the Penty's uh, U.S. Short Track Nationals from the uh, Bristol Motor Speedway. Uh, he uh, qualified on the pole, and they inverted. How many inverted? Was it six or four? They uh, they do the, you know, they do the, they put the three series in the bag, and you, you draw for that, and then I think it ended up being the Southern Super Series, so I think they do a top eight invert, and okay. I ended up drawing a five out of the bag. So. Gotcha. Okay. I knew it was something like that. Um, I was trying to keep up, because it was so confusing because so many different series running together. I got to get used to that. So um, that's right. <laughs> but um, Trevor Knowles uh, fought his way back to the nice victory. How awesome was that? Greg, Greg Van Alst uh, led a bunch of laps. He ended up second. Uh, a great battle between you two guys. That was fantastic. Greg Nass, uh, Greg Stephen Nassie finished third. Uh, Daniel Dye finished fourth. Greg, Jake Garcia finished fifth. Logan Runyon finished sixth. Sammy Smith finished seventh. Justin Kreider finished eighth. Austin, uh, is it N-A-S-O-N? Nas is it Nason? Nason? Nason. 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 Austin Nason finished ninth. And Cody Connor rounded out your top ten. And for a full rundown, the results should be on the um, Cars Tour um, website probably on Tuesday afternoons, uh, Wednesday morning. So hopefully a full rundown. And a full points will be updated. Now we, now Danny and I, we do the post race uh, podcast every time you know after the races, and we received word that Bristol was not a points race. Well, we talked with Jack um, yesterday, and he informed me that it was a points race. So you had really closed in uh, heavily on Matt Craig. So does that make it uh, 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 a whole lot more? Um, energetic to get back out to florence and and uh, hopefully uh, uh i mean you know you just you said earlier that you won't be able to make it to nashville so does that kind of uh, uh gosh that kind of uh, bums me out now you're not gonna uh you're not gonna be able to make a run at the championship is that kind of in that deal? yeah that's that's kind of how it's gonna go i, I know i feel bad i'm kind of letting my team down in a way but we had prior obligations with this COVID stuff going on. My cousins get my one, my wife's cousins get married that weekend, so I can't really get out of that one. I know it's going to hurt my whole season, and you know, with the with the championship, you know, battle with, between me, and Craig, and you know, some other guys like that. But um, just uh, yeah, that's kind of a bummer, um, you know, especially with the you know the points battle closing up this weekend. So. We'll just see if we can, you know, go to Florence and have a good run there and see where we end up. I know uh, kind of how it's going to work out, but, um, well, at least, you know, I can't go. At least with a stand-in driver, maybe they can tighten up with the uh, the owner's championship for him. So, uh. Uh, yeah, that'll be a good deal. You know, I think he's going to have, um, you know, he's, I think he's going to get Chandler Smith in the seat uh, oh, for Nashville. Cool. So. That'll be a big deal for him too, and Taylor Smith too. So he's a good little driver and, and runs really well too. So I know he's he'll, you know, Donnie's looking forward to that and, um, you know, putting a good piece under him too. So, um, that'll be a big deal for him and you know for me too to help me out a little bit too. So, um, you know, it's kind of a kind of a thing you got to kind of deal with, and I know it's it's kind of a bummer here, but um, I just. 
just move on to Florence and look forward to next year. Um, maybe the coronavirus and stuff like that will be gone by next year. We can have a good good year next year too. So, wow. um, just looking forward looking forward to it and, and see how it goes. Well, from our conversations on social media, I think Donnie agrees with me. The COVID will be over come November third. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of us <laughs> agree with that too. So, yeah, yeah I Donnie and I agree right. a lot with that. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that at that. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking with uh, uh, Trevor Knowles, big winner from the Bristol Motor Speedway, the Pinties, Pinties, what are Pinties, uh, Short Track Nationals at the Bristol Motor Speedway. He is a Cars Tour, a uh, Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour regular with us, and. Um, so far this season before Bristol, he, um, second in the Cars Tour points, uh, four poles, four top tens, two top fives, had a second right out of the box at Southern National Motorsports Park, third at the Hickory Motor Speedway, and at Bristol, that was your uh, fourth attempt um, at Bristol, and you only had a top ten going into uh, previous uh, going into the weekend, so I'm so glad that it, it finally worked out. And man, I can't say it enough. So happy for you guys and Donnie, and I know your crew had worked so hard. And uh, so you, I, I hate that you won't be able to run for a drivers' championship, but hopefully get that uh, owners' championship for um, for Donnie. So another victory at uh, Florence Motor Speedway will kind of lessen that sting. What do you think? Think that would help? I think so. It, it might help me, <laughs> but it might hurt me. It might make me want to go back to Nashville even more. So. <laughs> It's, yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what's going to go on there, but, uh, I'm just going to go race for the win and, and the points will kind of fall where they fall. But, um, like you said, just can't thank everybody at Donnie Wilson Motorsports. Uh, you guys at Race 22, Black Acid Apparel for coming on board with you guys this year. And just a cool deal to be talking to you guys. Um, just, uh, feels, feels great. And I think the motions are starting to set in now. So, um, just, uh, can't thank everybody for, for, for giving me the opportunity to talk to you guys and giving me the opportunity to get in the seat at Bristol Motor Speedway it was a really cool deal for me in my racing career. Yeah, that's that's one that's going to um, last for a while and, uh, you know, it's going to be a defining moment in your career, just one of many, uh, the way you guys have been performing because I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, i got to ask you, on that uh, sword uh, that they, uh, you know, the trophy, how heavy is it? It was actually pretty heavier than I thought it was. I went to pick it up, and I on about dropped it. And, man, this thing was pretty sharp, too. I, it was like, daggone, I better be careful with this big, huge sword here. I might cut myself if I ain't careful, but it was cool. I, I, it was cool to really be able to hoist that trophy up in victory lane, and, and it's got a cool, you know, etching on the trophy, too. It's got uh, U.S. Short Track Nationals on it, and kind of a cool deal. I have to figure out where I'm going to put it in my, my trophy case, but um i'll be sure to make a make enough room for it and make it look good in there too so front and center <laughs> front and center that's correct <laughs> all right coming up uh on this october 3rd i want to highlight uh the upcoming races for the uh solid rock carriers cars tour the uh, florence motor speedway the inaugural event for the uh, solid rock carriers cars tour for the um uh, florence motor speedway Steve Zacharias uh, trying to get things uh, kicked off there as they have taken over that facility. The Aaron's 250 dual event, super late models and late models, both series run in 125 laps. Uh, green flag is at 7 o'clock, so get there early. It will be standing room only, I feel. Uh, I think South Carolina is pretty wide open, so I think they can pack in as many fans as they want to in there. Uh, be responsible. If you feel like you need a face mask, do it. If um, if you if you feel strongly about face mask, and there's someone without a face mask, just avoid them. You don't need to, you know, call them out or do whatever. Just just ignore them and go the other way. You know, we don't need to That's be right. no trouble. You know, don't don't start no trouble. No, um, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. No, no, and that just creates a a, a a nuisance in public, and it gets other people involved, and you don't need that. Nobody needs that. That's that's right. And if you feel like you, you know, you have underlying health issues, just you know, just be be mindful of other people too. So I just try to be respectful in that that way too. So it'll be a big deal. Aaron's coming on board for the you know 250 at Florence is a huge deal for the Cars Tour, and 
I hope, like you said, we have a big turnout this weekend. It'd be cool to have a, you know, you know, bump fans, fans to fans, and have a huge crowd. It'll be a huge deal for Florence Motor Speedway too. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It's, hopefully, it's going to be a good weekend for everybody, and uh, hopefully, we can come out on top this weekend and make it two and two for two. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to see that for you guys. And uh, I know Donnie was at Bristol with you. I think Donnie will be there at the Florence with you guys. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be there. I'm sure he'll drive up from Oklahoma City like he does every weekend. I don't know why he won't buy a plane ticket, but <laughs> I, told him I, I told him I'd buy, buy him a plane ticket if he wanted to fly. He said, no, I'll drive. I like to drive. So whatever, Donnie. I appreciate you coming and uh, looking to make it two, two for two for you this weekend. And there you go. Just like I said, can't thank all them guys at Rowdy and, and Donnie Wilson Motorsports enough for, for giving me the opportunity to run the 22 this year. And it's been a, it's been a heck of a year for me and just uh, looking to cap it off with a win this weekend. And racing activities will start, on-track activities will start 2.30 on Friday. So if you can get out there and watch some practice, it's free to watch at the uh, Florence Motor Speedway. 2.30 starts practice. They'll alternate between the two divisions until 6.30. And the pits will close at 7 p.m. That's on Friday. So from 2.30 to 6.30, they'll be practicing. So get on out there and check them out. Take your stopwatch. See how fast they are. And um, you can you go out there and see who's uh, racing, who showed up. And Saturday, the uh, practice will start at 1 p.m. And the gates for the grandstands open at 4.30. So be sure and get out there and... Uh, Get your tickets. Uh, you can pre uh, advance sale tickets and carsracingtour.com. Carsracingtour.com. And we want to see lots of smiling faces out there. Uh, we want to make this inaugural event a uh, fantastic uh, grand opening uh, for the Cars Tour at uh, Florence Motor Speedway. We'll, uh, Trevor, appreciate you uh, joining us here on the uh, house call with Doc Love. Um, and we want to wish you the very best this weekend. We will be down there having fun, shooting videos and pictures and aggravating all the drivers. Uh, for sure, we'll be having fun. And we hope to see you having fun in Victory Lane again uh, for the first uh, Cars Tour event at the uh, Florence Motor Speedway. Anything else, well, we need to, anything else we need to add or talk about? Um, not that I know of. I look forward to seeing you guys this weekend at uh, Florence and uh, hopefully having a good weekend there too. So, And put on a good show for the fans. Um, should be a good weekend at Florence, and Hello. Just th can't thank the car going on for giving us the opportunity to race going on with the COVID stuff going going around. So just uh, can't thank them enough for giving us a place to run and, and come and enjoy a good weekend at Florence and, and seeing all the fans there too. So um, should be a good weekend of racing, and uh, see everybody there. Until then, we'll see you at the races. But I am telling you, I must be.